Hi everyone, Mary Loftus is my name. I'm a first year, I'm a first year student, I'm a first year PhD student and uh, my topic is learning analytics from the student point of view. My supervisor is uh, Dr. Michael Madden in NUI Galway and he is a machine learning expert. So I come from a teaching and learning background, his is a machine learning background and hopefully we're going to do something uh, between us. The graphic that I have up there is the stormtrooper, but not so much the stormtrooper as the reflection of the stormtrooper. And what I want to do in terms of learning analytics in this short three minutes is challenge you to think about learning analytics more from the student point of view and to think about it as a way that we can show to students what their performance in their learning is like or how, how we what a perception of their performance is like and then get their response to that. So make it a double loop learning kind of experience for our students. Um, so the mirror there is to uh, give the idea that learning analytics is a way to reflect back to students what they're doing in the classroom and, and outside the classroom. Uh, Dragan Gasovic, who uh, heads up the LAK uh, conference, the LAC conference, uh, he had a really interesting paper that said, you know, learning, learning analytics are about learning. So how do we bring that into the frame and how do we put it front and centre? Uh, coding, are, it's, it's quite a, a mature field, even though machine learning and, and learning analytics are new terms to many of us. It's quite a mature field and Codinger has done a lot of work around identifying when students are learning and when they're not. Uh, so these are some of the themes that are feeding into my research. Uh, Kirsty Kittle in Australia, again uh, prominent in the LAC community, talks a lot about you know, the student role in this data-rich learning environment that we find ourselves in. Uh, and we talk a lot about how we can shape students and move them in different directions and uh, intervene when they're not doing what we think they should be doing. But her question is, how do we actually get the students to harness some of this data? to interpret their own data. They're the closest to it. So how can we get students to think about the data that they create in learning environments and use it themselves in their own learning process? Um, and the machine learning bit is kind of bringing up the tail end. My supervisor always accuses me of just throwing in machine learning at the end. So it's, it's here at the end again, but it is going to be very much a, a big part of, of this research project. Um, so the, the question here is how can we use probabilistic machine learning techniques and a number of people that spoke before me there have talked about predicting things in learning environments. So that's just setting out some of the themes of my research. How am I doing for time, Lee? You're okay. Uh, opportunities and challenges. Okay, a lot on the slide here, so I'm not going to drag you through all of it and hopefully uh, it'll make some sense when you see it in isolation later on. But I'll drag you to the bottom of the slide first. Uh, Gert Biesta uh, is an author that I've only come across in the last few months. Um, and he talks about education and its central purpose as the coming into presence of unique individual human beings. You know, he says that we're, we're used to talking about education in terms of qualification and subjectification, uh, but not so much from this idea of the development of the individual human being. And what he says is that education, the, the onus on education is that spaces might open up for uniqueness to come into the world. So these are terms that we don't often get a chance to think about uh, education in. But that's again the sort of the starting point from this research. Uh, how can we make that kind of space and how can we use data to do it? So some of the opportunities, we can use data and these models to give students another view of their own understanding of their own learning. Uh, with a, a, a real emphasis on metacognition and reflection. So students are so busy these days, you know, we get them to do so much work, but we don't often get a chance to get them to pause and reflect and think about how they learn, what they're learning, what they're doing with their learning. Uh, I'm hoping this research will enable more problem-based learning scenarios, that we can find new pedagogies to actually bring more problem-based learning into the classroom. Problem-based learning is hard because it takes so much effort to, to uh, assess from the, the, the lecturer point of view. But if we can actually get <coughs> students to use data to say, this is what I think I've learned, and here's the data I have to support my contention. You know, isn't that a, a, a powerful way for students to think about their own learning and to, to make a case for their own learning rather than be assessed in a kind of a more anonymous way? 
Uh, and I think there are huge opportunities to provide more formative feedback. Challenges, loads of them over there on the right-hand side, probably won't dwell on them so much. Uh, data, data interoperability is something a lot of people have talked about. You know, we've data from different and disparate sources. How do we bring them together in meaningful ways? The ethical challenge, thanks to Heike from uh, NUI Galway for really putting that front and centre today. I think no matter who we are or what we're doing in this space, that's one of our first steps, is to work out the ethical challenges of what we think we would like to do in this space, because unintended consequences will have real effect on students if we don't do that. So uh, useful, I think, to, to draw attention to that again. Um, some of the next steps, so what am I going to do next? So there's, there's all the things that I want to do and the challenges and uh, the opportunities. What are the next steps? Uh, I'm going to take some learning analytics models into a classroom in IT Sligo in January. We're going to use uh, a system called the Connected Learning Analytics Toolkit, which can take data from disparate sources, store it in a triple-based uh, data format, so it's not your usual database format, uh, it's the XAPI format, which LinkedIn are very interested in it as a future way of students presenting their CVs to employers. And looking at how we can use the data in that format to feed back to students, look, this is what it looks like is happening in your, in your learning experience. Uh, what do you think? And getting the students' view then on that, getting, that to, getting them to feed in on what we think we're showing them, uh, and have them have a voice in that process. So then hopefully to conduct a mixed method study of their experience. So they're my, they're my next steps. Some reading there if you get this later on to, to have a look through. Thank you. Thank you.